Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GamerTube, and welcome back to our What Needs To Be In Little Nightmares character concept series. So in today's video, we'll be recapping the main storyline of the Orphan arc from our character concept series. So this video will just be containing the four main characters, the Trouble Child, the Kind Child, and the Siblings. So I know in these videos we've had a lot of different characters and enemies, but we'll only be focusing on the enemies that actually tie these four main characters together. We'll also be showing some new footage of different characters and what they were getting up to in the backgrounds of the stories. We'll also be answering a couple of questions that the viewers have had. And as always, I will just state that these are just a couple of our own ideas. We don't expect Tarsia Studios or Bandai Namco to really do anything with these ideas like make a game or a DLC. These are just some fun stories that we get to tell and we hope you enjoy. Also, I will just add that the community character concept video is still coming, we're just currently working on it at the moment, so stay patient and stay tuned. And before we start today's video, if you could please consider leaving a like and commenting as it helps out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. Also, do be sure to subscribe to GamerTube so you don't miss out on any of our future uploads. Alrighty, well, let's recap and relive the main storyline of the Orphan arc from our character concept series. So the mainline story of our series starts off at the Pale City Orphanage. This is where all of our main characters resided. This building was once a regular orphanage with caretakers that looked after the children. Then one day, the frequency from the signal tower started to change the caretakers. They no longer worried about the children and were infatuated with the strange broadcast on the television. Eventually, the caretakers left the orphanage and wandered deep into the city, leaving the children to fend for themselves. For the most part, the children were self-reliant and could take care of each other. They survived of whatever tinned food was left in the kitchen area. Amongst these children are our main protagonists. We have the kind child who, hence the name, was considered to be a fairly friendly and caring child. They'd be one of the main children who would gather food and share amongst all the fellow orphans. They would typically look after everyone and make sure they were taken care of. We then have the brother and the little sister, aka the siblings. They were the only orphans out of the bunch that were actually related. They cared for and looked after each other. The two were practically inseparable. We then come to the final main character, the trouble child. The trouble child was an outcast amongst all the other children. They never got along with anyone. Hence their name, they were always a troubled child themselves. They would always start arguments and fights with all the other children. After a fight with the trouble child and the other children broke out, the others decided to lock them away in a room by themselves. The kind child was always against this decision and continued to feed and care for them behind the door. Now the true story begins with the unfortunate day the exterminator invaded the orphanage. The exterminator was contracted by the owner to fumigate the building and make sure there was nothing left alive. The owner had plans to demolish the orphanage for their own greedy financial gain. When the exterminator arrived at the orphanage, they immediately walked through the front doors and got to work. The children all scattered and ran away from the exterminator's deadly poison. Majority of the children managed to escape including the siblings. The kind child on the other hand decided to stay behind and save the trouble child. They broke the trouble child out of their confinement and together they tried to escape this disturbing exterminator. After evading the exterminator's poison gas and numerous traps, they found themselves in the kitchen. The kind child made their way through an open window to only fall into one of the exterminator's cage traps. With nothing they could do, the trouble child had to flee and try and find another exit. Once they made their way past the exterminator and out of the building, they found the kind child trapped in their small cage inside the exterminator's truck. The trouble child managed to mix up a new form of deadly corrosive poison that eroded through the lock and freed the kind child. Just as they were about to escape, the exterminator found them. Just before they could grab the two children, the tanks of poisonous gas exploded. The extremely poisonous gas was enough to erode through their mask and knock them unconscious. After surviving this tragic ordeal, the kind child and the trouble child parted ways. The kind child wanted to track down the other children and make sure they were all okay. Whereas the trouble child wanted to track down and locate whoever sent this deranged exterminator to their orphanage. 
so for the troubled child's part in the story timeline, we'll come back to them later in this video. We now focus back on the kind child and exactly where they went after their ordeal at the orphanage. They didn't travel far from the building. Like the many other children, they hid on the streets of the Pale City, surviving however they could. Over the course of a week, the poison inside the orphanage managed to subside. The kind child was the only one out of all the orphans who ever returned back to the building. They were searching for something that they left behind. Something they couldn't be without. Back inside the orphanage was their beloved stuffed bear. Out of everyone they knew, the bear was their only true friend. As the kind child approached the building, they noticed that the exterminator and their truck were nowhere to be seen. Out of the corner of their eye, they spotted a strange shadowy figure exiting the building. But this strange individual looked nothing like the exterminator. As they looked closer, it was revealed to be the mailman. The mailman was a strange character who would steal multiple items and deliver them into a further location called the suburbs. The kind child noticed hanging out of their mailbag was their beloved Teddy. They needed to get them back no matter what. So the kind child followed the mailman all the way back to the suburbs where they deliver their stolen items to empty houses. The kind child managed to camp out in the attic of one of the houses to track the comings and goings of the mailman. They eventually made a move and decided to follow them and open all the packages this strange mailman delivered around the neighborhood. Unfortunately, they got the best of the kind child and captured them and threw them into the back of their delivery van. Whilst inside the van, they managed to track down their teddy. The kind child managed to escape the mailman and lock them inside their own delivery van. After all was said and done, the kind child was once again reunited with their best friend. So now we come to the siblings. As they escape from the orphanage with their other children, they manage to survive by themselves on the streets of the Pale City. After two weeks, one week after the kind child tracked down the mailman, the siblings decide to explore the abandoned Pale City Mall. As the siblings explore the mall, they come face to face with the security guard. The security guard was hell-bent on capturing the siblings. In the security guard's disturbing white eyes, they saw the two siblings as potential thieves and would stop at nothing to catch them. The siblings would soon escape this menacing character and safely explore the rest of them all. We soon realize that the brother is looking for a gift for the sister as it is her birthday. After they left the abandoned food court, they found themselves outside a toy store. This would be the perfect place to find their little sister a gift. After they snuck into the surveillance room and stole the guard's keys, they managed to open the toy store. As they entered, they now had a whole new threat to deal with. Next in the timeline, we come back to the kind child who has just been reunited with their old friend. They decided to search around the suburbs for a new place to live. They also had no luck finding any other children. So they decided to live in the suburbs and hopefully the other orphans would find their way to this seemingly safe area as well. While searching for a new house to make their own, they came across a fairly unique looking house. As they entered the house, they were mesmerized by all the strange looking artwork hanging on the walls. They came across a large set of doors locked by three different padlocks. The kind child had to complete a series of puzzles to obtain three different keys. Once they unlocked the doors, they found themselves in a room filled with strange paintings. Then they met face to face with the painter. A sinister character with the ability to look into the future and paint the outcome on the canvas. The painter quickly chased the kind child through the house and could see into the future as to where they were hiding. Eventually, the chase led to the art supply room where some red paint accidentally sprayed all over one of their paintings. This caused the painter a great deal of pain and seemed to damage them quite a bit. 
So the kind child made their way through the house and ruined every painting they could. They came across a strange painting of the siblings and they appeared to be in trouble. They took one last look and then they sprayed the artwork with the paint, ruining the last painting. The painter's eyes faded as they froze like a statue and couldn't move a muscle. The kind child made their way to the attic where they could see in the distance the Pale City Mall. It's revealed that by defeating the painter, the kind child has obtained the ability to see into the future just like the painter. They stare at the mall and in the distance they see the siblings need their help. This now brings us back to the siblings who have just entered the toy store. They notice a large shadowy figure looming over them. They quickly hide from this mysterious figure. This shadowy character is revealed to be the toy maker. As they hide under a toy truck, the toy maker reaches down to pick it up, but before they can, they hear a distracting sound and go investigate. Before the toy maker enters the back of the store, they empty out a box of defective toys onto the ground. These were the twisted sentient creations of the toy maker. The brother picks up a toy hammer and defends himself and their sister against these disturbing looking toys. After the struggle was over, they finally found the perfect gift. A small music box up on the top shelf. Before they can retrieve it, the toy maker grabs it and takes it back to their workshop in the back of the store. The toy maker's plan was to destroy the music box and use it for scrap parts. The siblings sneak into the workshop and manage to get their hands back on the music box. But the toy maker notices them and proceeds to chase the siblings out of the store. The siblings manage to escape just before the shutters close. But suddenly the toy maker bursts through the shutters causing the little sister to drop the music box. The security guard's boot comes down and crushes the music box. The siblings are now faced with both the security guard and the toy maker. Whilst all this is happening, the kind child has arrived at the Pale City Mall. They climb up the fire escape ladder that leads to the roof of the mall. They then crawl through an air duct that leads down into the surveillance room. This is where they sat at the desk and watched the monitors. Just as the siblings were trapped by the security guard, the kind child closed the gate in between the characters and opened the gate behind the siblings. The kind child then left the surveillance room and climbed back up the air vent to the roof of the mall. As the siblings left the mall without a gift for the sister, the kind child quickly wrote on a piece of paper and pinned it to their best friend. They realised that someone else needed them more. They tossed the bear down from the roof and it landed near the siblings. The little sister picks up the old bear and silently thanks whoever gifted them their birthday present. For the next thread in the storyline, we follow the kind child's journey back to the suburbs. On their way back through the city, they manage to track down one of the other orphans who was being attacked by a deranged diver in an abandoned grocery store. Just like the mall, they manage to climb up to the roof of the store and activate the roller door shutter, trapping the diver inside and saving their fellow orphan. With their new ability, they've managed to achieve what they set out to do and protect all of the children. They finally make it back to the suburbs where they once again try to find a new home to live in. They couldn't go back to the painter's home just in case there was anything else awaiting them. Little did they know, in the basement was something far more worse. After searching, they finally come across a new home. They make themselves comfortable up in the attic and settle in to their new life. One night, the kind child hears an intruder break into their home. This intruder turned out to be a creepy character named Puppet. Puppet had the ability to make individuals freeze and have their limbs feel like they were being tied by an invisible string and being controlled. The kind child soon figured out Puppet's weakness was light. The kind child devised a plan to gather up all the light sources and put them in the basement and lure them into a trap. So they gathered up all the lamps in the house and set up the trap in the basement. They lured the puppet downstairs and turned on all the lampshades. 
the puppet eventually collapsed to the floor, defeated. Just as the kind child walked up the stairs to exit the basement, the puppet's lifeless hand quickly grabbed them. All of a sudden, the puppet and the kind child were dragged through a mysterious door. The door shuts as the screen fades to black. We now return to the Trouble Child's journey to find out who sent the Exterminator and who destroyed their home. Right after the event with the Exterminator, they climbed into their truck and stole their navigation equipment. They used this to track down the location of this mysterious individual. They travelled through the wilderness for days until they finally reached the mansion. They managed to walk through the front doors and explore this grand mansion for answers. This is where they met the maid, a disturbing character with an upside down head. They hid and avoided this disturbing looking character. They then found themselves in a secret room where a projector played revealing a character known as the owner. The owner was once a powerful businessman who practically owned half the Pale City and a special leisure cruise named the Moor. After viewing this short film, the Trouble Child decided to find this character. After more exploring, they found themselves in the boiler room. The maid once again cornered them and tried to capture them. They both climbed up the boiler, causing it to be unstable. The Trouble Child managed to squeeze for a crack in the ceiling and found themselves in the owner's private quarters. They saw the shadow of an old, sick man in the end of the room. Just as they approached the owner, the maid and the exterminator who had woken up and returned burst into the room. Just as the two menacing characters go to grab the trouble child, the boiler beneath them explodes, destroying the floor and sending them all down below in the boiler room. As the dust cleared, the owner was crushed by a pile of fallen debris. The exterminator tried to save them, but it was too late. The maid quickly ran out of the room knowing what was going to happen. Both the exterminator and the maid suddenly died on the spot. It turned out that anyone who signed a contract with the owner would perish the moment the owner themselves passed away. The reason for this sacrificial contract will become clear later in the story. The trouble child exits the mansion and wanders off into the wilderness. Next in the storyline is the siblings once again. We follow them as they live their day-to-day -day life in the Pale City, surviving however they can. The brother notices after the events of the mall and their stressful living circumstance, they wanted to cheer up their sister who has fallen into a deep depressive state. They decided to take their sister to an old abandoned arcade. Here they explored around and played a bunch of old dusty games and activities. Little did they know, the creepy looking arcade mascot would spring to life and try to track down the two little intruders. As the siblings hid from this creepy character, the little sister dropped her stuffed bear. The strange looking mascot picked it up and put it on the prize wall behind the counter. The siblings snuck up to the counter where the brother located the door lock release switch that would allow them to leave. But they couldn't leave without the sister's stuffed bear so the brother climbed the prize wall to retrieve it. As they climbed, the mascot snatched the little sister up off the counter and carried them away into the storage room. The brother followed them through the storage room door where they met the rejected mascots. These disturbing twisted bodies of fabric and metal sprang to life and chased the brother through the storage room. The brother managed to escape through the backstage door where they once again saw the mascot. The mascot noticed the brother and in a panic quickly chased them out onto the main stage. Just as the mascot goes to step on the brother, the little sister locates the emergency release switch for the mascot's costume. When the mascot took the little sister off the counter and into the backstage, they gestured to them to free them from the suit where they were trapped in. The reason the mascot panicked and chased the brother is because they thought the brother would have stopped the sister from freeing them. As the sister pushed the button, it opened the suit and revealed the individual inside. 
This character was The Stranger. A non-threatening character who rewarded the siblings with their teddy bear and let them out of the arcade. As they left, the sister had a smile on their face and felt a lot better. The siblings returned to the streets where they soon encountered the mailman. The mailman managed to escape from their delivery truck in the suburbs and made their way back to the city to steal more items and individuals to deliver to the suburbs. The siblings were caught, packaged up, and dropped off to the suburbs near the area of the painter and the kind child's new house. The siblings saw a number of strings leading from one house to another across the street. The siblings followed the strings into the house to see where they led. The strings took them to a room where they saw the kind child suspended in midair. They noticed their friend was missing their arm and it was replaced with a wooden one instead. As they got closer, it was revealed to be the puppeteer who had tied them up and was controlling them. It was also the puppeteer who gave them their wooden arm. It wasn't necessarily implanted in a surgery, nor was their arm amputated. It was more like a transfer with a dark power, like how the lady in Little Nightmares can turn children into gnomes. The puppeteer fled into the darkness as they set out strings to entangle the siblings. The siblings quickly evaded the room and set out to save the kind child. In doing this, the siblings had to solve a number of puzzles in order to advance through the house. In one of the puzzles, the children discovered that the puppeteer was also the painter's husband and Puppet was their child. The siblings eventually made it to the final room where they had their final showdown with the puppeteer and Puppet. Both the brother and sister fended off the two menacing characters whilst also protecting the kind child. Near the end of the conflict, the puppeteer conjured all the string they could and destroyed the structure of the house to do so. Eventually, a large beam of wood dropped on top of the puppeteer, pinning them to the ground. Siblings freed the kind child and attempted to make their escape. The puppeteer, in a last-ditch effort, sent out their string to grab the little sister. The brother bravely sacrificed himself and jumped in front of the string. Both the brother and the puppeteer fell through the floor as the house collapsed on top of them. Luckily, the kind child and the sister made it out alive, but unfortunately, the brother perished inside the collapsed house. The sister sadly leaves her and the kind child's stuffed bear behind as they both set out to their last destination. Just before we come to the ending of the Orphan Ark storyline, we come to the finale of the Troubled Child's journey. After we met the owner and escaped from the mansion, the Troubled Child decided to live out in the wilderness. Some time has passed and we see them sailing down a river on a makeshift boat. Their little boat is suddenly attacked by a character we call the Creature. The Creature swam underneath and capsized the Trouble Child's boat. They quickly swam for their life and made it towards the old fishing wharf. They soon realised that this whole area was fenced off and the only way through was a large locked gate. The Trouble Child had to start three separate generators to activate the massive locks. While starting the generators, they came into contact with the creature a number of times. When they finally opened the gate, they rushed through as the creature chased after them as well. Running through the wilderness, they arrived at an old cabin. The Trouble Child evaded the creature as best they could until the creature finally snatched them up. All of a sudden, they heard a loud bang. We then see that the hunter had shot the creature in order to protect the trouble child. In the end, we find out that the trouble child and the hunter are one and the same. The trouble child is in fact the hunter. Now a lot of viewers wanted to know what happened after this reveal. To put it simply, two of the same individuals cannot coexist in the same timeline. Since this is a time loop like Mono and the Thin Man, only one can remain. So the hunter places the trouble child on the ground. 
They leave behind their gun and walk off into the wilderness where they simply disappear, leaving the trouble child to eventually grow into the hunter once more. This is the version of the hunter, aka the trouble hunter, that interacts with Six and Mono in Little Nightmares 2. Unfortunately, the trouble hunter meets their end when they are shot by Six and Mono. In shooting the Trouble Hunter, this alternatively closes the loop. It all ends with the death of the Trouble Hunter. This in turn ends the tragic story of the Trouble Child. We now finally come to the ending of the Orphan Arc storyline. The sister and the kind child travel through the wilderness and make their way towards the O's mansion. Prior to the children arriving at the mansion, the owner resurrected themselves with the life force of both the exterminator and the maid. This is precisely the reason the owner made his workers sign the Dark Contracts. In the untimely event of their death, all of their subjects would be sacrificed and their life force would be transferred into them, granting them a new life. Although the souls they received were not enough to nurse them back to perfect health. Back to the present day, the children enter the mansion and try to locate whoever's in charge. The children must first traverse through a series of deadly traps in order to get to the next room. They must avoid a number of stone statues of all the different characters in the series. These stone statues have the ability to turn the children into stone. They then find themselves in the observatory, where they find their eyes on the owner. The owner is an old, frail character that requires an oxygen tank to breathe. The children hide as they walk on by into the next room. Both the sister and the kind child figure out a puzzle that grants them a key to the next room. They both get separated and the kind child decides to press on. They spy on the owner as they stare at a mirror inside their private quarters. They take off a strange looking glove revealing a damaged wooden hand. Also, as they stare into the mirror, their eyes start to glow. Knowing who this individual is, the kind child runs to go find the sister. After a series of events, the two children find themselves trapped in the cold storage room. They bested the owner and managed to pull out one of their breathing tubes with one of the meat hooks. Both the children quickly escape as large grotesque eyes start appearing and breaking through the walls. They make it to the entrance as they fight to open the door. The kind child manages to open the door enough for the sister to squeeze through. The door slams shut by itself, damaging the kind child's wooden hand. The owner grabs the kind child and they both stare at each other. It's been made clear by this point that the two are the exact same person. Instead of fading away like the hunter, the owner selfishly wants to live as long as they can. So they decide to drain their younger self of their life force and become one. But the kind child disapproves of what they've become and rejects the owner's power. The two cancel each other out as the kind child takes control of all the eyes in the mansion and envelops both of them in a blinding light that makes both of them vanish forever. The sister enters back through the mansion, but when she steps through, it's all gone. All that remains is a cliffside and a strange building in the distance. In the end, it is revealed that the little sister travels to the nest and becomes the girl in the yellow raincoat. The orphan arc itself is revealed to be a prequel to Little Nightmares 2 and Very Little Nightmares. Alrighty everyone, that's all we have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing, as it helps out a lot, and it is greatly appreciated. Also, let us know in the comments section down below what you thought was your favourite part, or your favourite enemy, or character from the Orphan Arc for our Little Nightmares character concept series. Alrighty, well, until our next video, I'll catch you later, bye.